Um, from the glasses. There they are. Yeah, I know. All right. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, 13, starting in verse number 13 through 21. So we'll go ahead and read this. Uh, as we are moving into the sixth trumpet, two weeks ago, uh, we covered basically the first five. Uh, not basically, we covered the first five. And so we're going to go to the sixth trumpet here. And then we're going to go kind of what you may call a pause or an interlude or or not 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 saying that between the fifth the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet there's a there's a, 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 a span of time and we're not real sure on that possibly but we understand that John here kind of interrupts what he's he's writing and he's writing what he is seeing besides the trumpets um, so we'll we'll talk about that in a second but let's go to the sixth trumpet verse number thirteen. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from who the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and, and uh, with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent or, uh, of the works of their hands. And they should, uh, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. So that talks about in the chapter 9. Here we see John describe what he's seeing with the sixth trumpet. And as I kind of mentioned well, two weeks ago, I want to say last week, but if I say last week, you know what I mean. This, this scene from heaven <coughs> that John is seeing, you know, we know that John is describing what he's seeing in heaven, then comparing and kind of shifting to what he's seeing happening on the earth. <coughs> so the scene in heaven kind of starts out here again with the sixth trumpet talking about the golden altar. And about two weeks ago, we talked about the scene of heaven and how heaven, or let me back up, how earth is kind of a type and shadow of the temple of God in heaven. Talking about the altars and uh, the golden altars and, and all of these kinds of things that the, the uh, temple of earth had, Solomon's temple, the wilderness tabernacle, all of these things were uh, uh, replicas, if you want to put it that way, of heaven. And so here again, we, we got another uh, uh, representation of this, talking about the, the four horns of the golden altar. Again, if you go through Leviticus and you go through all of these things talking about the temple, this this is, describes exactly the temple of earth with the four horns of the golden altar. Now, the golden altar, the four horns of the golden altar on earth represented the, uh, the altar of incense. If you remember, the altar of incense that was right outside the Holy of Holies, the, the curtain, it was right outside the curtain. 
and so it, 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 it uh, represented the incest uh, the, uh, that went up into the, uh, you know, to the, uh, the temple or into the Holy of Holies where that smoke of, the, of that the fire that burned this incense would uh, kind of not kind of blur, if you want to put it that way, the high priest as he went into the Holy of Holies because if he, and, and going back to Leviticus, if he would have saw the face of God, he would have died. So this incense or this smoke kind of blurred that out. And so, again, this represented the, the incense uh, in, uh, of heaven that represented, and we're going to talk about it here in a minute, the prayers of the saints. And so, again, the, the incense on earth kind of was that type of shadow, that representation of the, the, the golden altar of heaven where the prayers of the saints are represented there. So, and again, the, the incense was a pleasing aroma to God. And so, going to heaven, the prayers of the saints are a pleasing aroma to God. And so, that's kind of that, that comparison or that type of shadow on earth compared to heaven. I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar. In the tabernacle in the temple of Israel, the golden altar was the altar of incense, which I just uh, said, which was a representation of the prayers of God's people. So on earth it is a representation, but also in heaven. The four horns of the golden altar, these stood at each corner of the altar. Atoning blood was applied to the horns. From these horns, John heard a voice in, in this, John recalled a repeated theme, the prayers of God's people play a large role in the end time drama. We talked about the prayers of the martyrs that I think I don't, a couple uh, a couple trumpets ago talked about the prayer of the martyrs that um, that was heard and that was uh, actually that was the seals, not the trumpets. Uh, release and, and here's God says release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four angels have no necessary connection with the four angels of Revelation 7-1. They may be the same four angels, or they may be, or they may not be. Whoever they are, they are prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year of the unleashing of this judgment. So God prepared these four angels that were going to release this judgment, and they were prepared for, let's just say, the, last, the, the very minute, the very hour that God released them to do this. This assumes these are bad angels. They may or not be, but they probably are evil angels. No matter what, they are servants of the divine purpose. In other words, it doesn't matter if they're a demon or an angel, they're going to do what God says. God the Almighty. And they're going to follow what he says. And, and, and they have a purpose that God has for them this very moment that he releases them. Uh, were released, and they were released, the Bible says, to kill a third of mankind. This is scary, right? We'll talk about that more in a second. The demonic locust described earlier, if you remember in uh, the, the two weeks ago, on uh, the fifth trumpet, remember these uh, crazy looking demonic locusts? I remember they were to torment, but they could not kill, remember? And it said that people would look to die and they, they, they can't die. So the locusts, again, they follow God's orders. He said, you can torment, but you can't kill. And so they were released, but now these angels have a different order. Their order is to kill one-third of mankind on earth. Now think about that. Just think about that. Uh, I, I was just thinking about this as I was preparing. Right now, they 